Welcome back to our series of looking at things that affect your magnet choice, the magnet considerations. The first thing we looked at was size and shape. Now we're building on that. Now we've selected the size or the shape and we understand the effects that that's going to have on what our cost will be and things like this. We now want to turn our attention to things that also affect it like the materials. You've heard of a lot of different materials. You see it advertised. You see it on websites. Super magnets, rare earth magnets, neodymium magnets, all of these different things. And we're going to get into those into more detail. But first I want to talk about the factors that drive our material choice. The first factor is temperature. We are very concerned about temperature because a lot of people don't think about it. You think that the temperature you're wanting to use the magnet at is going to be just fine. And then you might decide you want to solder something to it. You might decide you want to hot glue it. You might want to do something that raises the temperature above that magnet materials operating temperature. And so we have to take a look at this and make sure we choose the right material that matches your temperature consideration. There are many different types and we'll look at those. Another one is how fragile it is. We want you to understand these magnets are made through a centered process. That's S-I-N. T-E-R-E-D. This is very similar to the process that makes fine china and things like this because they are baked in an oven and fused together, which also makes them very brittle. So basically the rule of thumb I like to use is anything you can do with your fine china plates, that's the same way that you would treat these magnets because impact is going to cause them to break. We, we virtually guarantee you let two large magnets slam together, one or both will break. Not that they won't break, we guarantee they will break because they are very fragile. Next is machinability. Since they're very hard like this, they're nearly at a ceramic level of hardness, they're very difficult to machine with anything less than diamond tooling. I have a lot of people that have machine shops. They'll get the magnets, think they can drill a hole in them. No possible way. It'll break the, it'll either break the bits or it will shatter the magnet. We can get the magnets made at the factory with the holes in them and that's the way you'd prefer to get it done, I can tell you, because their plating is made out of a nickel or something like this and you have to first machine through that, then you hit the extremely hard material and it frequently breaks. So machinability is sometimes an issue that we want to make sure you understand and we'll look at that in more detail. Cost is probably the single biggest driver of picking the right magnet because as the magnet gets bigger, it's going to cost more. As the magnet shape, different shapes of magnets have different prices associated with them. Basic rectangular block is going to be your least expensive and some because it's very easy for them to do. If you're going to want something that's got a curved shape and two holes in it that's tapered, that's going to be very expensive because it's a lot more working that's got to be done. And we'll look at some of those things in a minute as well in the other videos. The next thing we want to do is the way that you're going to use it operationally. And what I mean by this is a lot of people have to factor in the safety concerns. Safety from two aspects. Your people. Are you going to pick a magnet that has a high probability of smashing people's fingers when they use them? Such as a one inch cube. If, two peop if people are using one inch cubes and they're having to handle them and put them into something, there's a good chance that eventually somebody's going to get a finger pinched with it. That's a very dangerous situation. We want to try and avoid that. If we understand your application, maybe we need to do something differently to make that work. The other thing that we want to consider is the magnet side of things. A lot of times if you don't really pay attention to your application, you can get magnets where you have a high degree of breakability, where you're using them in the application and just the way you're doing things and have it designed causes them to break more frequently and we'd like to help you get that done. Then there's a lot of other factors that come in to the materials that we want to choose and we'll look at just a few examples of the kind of things that, that affect these other factors. So that ought to wrap it up as just an overview. Each of the videos that are going to follow this are going to cover each one of these specific things in a little more detail.